Hello, and welcome to Let's Talk Spoop. I'm your host, Don, and today I've got a special one for you. I'm going to talk about Late Night with the Devil, which I was able to catch in theaters today. Came home, prepped this, ready to go. Uh, it will be available more on April 12th, but I was able to catch it while it was on its limited theater run. I'm very excited to talk about it. As per usual on Let's Talk Spoop, we break things into six separate categories. Those six separate categories are story, acting, music, atmosphere, look, and finally, creep. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into Late Night with the Devil. Story. So, Late Night with the Devil is exactly what it sounds like. It is about a late night TV host who is trying to bring his ratings up. He's This movie takes place in 1975. He is up against Johnny Carson, and he's trying to bring his ratings up. And so to do that on a Halloween special, he's doing a bunch of spoopy stuff, and that spoopy stuff includes having a psychic, having a debunker, and finally having a little girl who is supposedly possessed by a demon. And then having her show what that demon possession looks like. It's a great idea. It's not terribly original. I've seen similar concepts before. But the story was very well executed. It's got some um, kind of off-screen romance that's hinted at. It's got some tear-jerking moments with the backstory. Uh, the narration that opens the movie is done by Michael Ironsides who nailed it and it talks kind of about the history of your main character and kind of gives you a reason to care about him. Um, so overall I gave it a three out of five for story. Acting. So this movie had a great cast and all of these people I felt did a fantastic job. First you've got David Dashmalchen hope I pronounced that correctly, who I really only recognize from playing um, the Polka Dot Man in uh, Suicide Squad, which he nailed. But in this, he is killing it as a talk show host with his partner, Gus, played by Reese Alteri. Again, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Gus is the, the guy with the microphone in front of the band that you see on, you know, all these late night shows and they really nailed that kind of late night show feel with these two characters and they both play their job really well. Uh, Gus is also a firm believer in the supernatural and he gets very freaked out with what's going on. Um, Ingrid Torelli plays Lily who is the possessed girl and she was amazing. She was creepy. She was sweet, she was adorable, all rolled into one, did a great job. Uh, we have Faisal Bazi, who, God, these names. Um, he plays kind of a David Copperfield-esque psychic, and he did that job very well. And then finally, my favorite character in this was Ian Bliss, who plays Carmichael Haig, who is a former stage ma magician, who has now made it his goal to debunk the supernatural. And like I said, I felt like all these actors really nailed their roles, did a great job. So I gave it a 4 out of 5 for acting. Music. The music sets the tone for this movie. There's no real standout songs, but the music does a very good job of giving it that late night show feel that I remember from watching Conan O'Brien and Jay Leno when I was a kid. So for music, three out of five. Atmosphere. This is where this movie nailed it for me. The atmosphere is top notch. This feels like a, an actual late night show that you are watching while at the same time there's spooky stuff going on. And the buildup, they have a very good slow buildup starting with our fake psychic who gets ambushed by something supernatural to 
bringing on the skeptic to bringing on the possessed girl, just the, the slow build up, the spook, the kind of small scale, creepy things going on in the background. It's top notch. So obviously five out of five for atmosphere. Look again, they're going for a look. This movie looks and feels like something out of the seventies. They have practical special effects and some not so practical special effects that look like what you would expect from a 70s horror film. And I loved it. I ate it up. So look, five out of five. Creep. This movie has a fairly good creep factor. Uh, it, from that slow buildup to the spooky things that end up happening, it creeps me out. It might keep me awake tonight. I don't know yet. We'll find out. But I found it to be fairly creepy. So, and Jeremiah told me from the uh, trailer that it looked disturbing, which I feel like it lived up to. So for Creep, three out of five. So we total all that up, and because I'm lazy with my my uh, effects, we get ourselves a four out of five. It was actually a 3.8, but I rounded up because I'm nice like that. For Late Night with the Devil. What did you think? Did you see the movie? Have you, are you excited to see the movie? Have you even heard of this movie before? Let me know in the comments down below. Think about liking, subscribing, donating, just joining in this community, and we would really appreciate it. I will give you a shout out if I can, because I love you. Okay, thanks, bye.